So when you are talking about value, there are four characteristics of value. There are four items that can influence the value on a property. We have used this, and I have mentioned it before, this book loves its acronyms. And these four characteristics spell out dust, demand, utility, scarcity, and transferability. D-U-S-T. That's how you remember them. The demand on a property will increase the value alone. There is a very uh, high-end lake just on the north side of Houston called Conroe. Conroe, all of the houses, when they go for sale, they will go at a premium because the demand for that lake is very high. When a house goes for sale, it never sells at a discount because the demand for that property is so high. All right. Fifth Avenue in New York never is going to sell for a discount. So demand is the first characteristic that can artificially inflate value. And maybe artificially is not a right word because it really does it. The utility of a property. How many different ways could that property be used? Could it be used as a residential house? Or could it be also rezoned to be a commercial building like we talked about in that zoning chapter? All right. So there could be two sets of buyers. You could have the residential buyer looking at it and you could potentially have a commercial developer. That's going to increase the value because now you have the more people looking, the more potential for value. So the utility will define the value. The scarcity. Now, it's kind of weird. I put scarcity kind of in with demand because when properties are scarce, they're in high demand, right? There's only so many buildings on Fifth Avenue in New York. That scarcity is what causes the demand. So scarcity also will increase. There are 472 lots that sit on Geist Reservoir, which is on the north side of Indianapolis, Indiana. When one of those properties go for sale, the demand is high, therefore the value is high. But the fact is there's only 472 in the entire world that sit on that lake. Contrast that with like farmland. How many billions of acres of farmland are there in the United States? I would venture to say there's probably trillions of acres. Those are in abundance. Therefore, the value is way lower. All right. This last one here is transferability. How easy is it to transfer the ownership of that property? Go back to one thing that we have touched on several times. We talked about an encumbrance or a lien on a property. And we joked and said at some point, liens can actually be more than the value. We called that negative equity. And we joked and said, well, the property's upside down. I owe a hundred and it's only valued at 90. And I told you, you can't clear the lien. And remember, we're not talking about bringing money to the table. Therefore, you cannot sell that property. The transferability on that property is gone. In essence, that property has no value to anybody. You can't sell it because it's encumbered more than the value. And that's what they're talking about right here. The ease of transferability. Well, how easy is it to sell something worth 90,000 for 100? Very hard. Therefore, the value in it's virtually zero. These are the four factors that determine 
the value of a property? Are there four ways that you can manipulate that? What we are trying to come up with when they appraise a property is this thing called market value. There's the word again. I told you we don't use the word price. We use value. Now, the market value <laughs> has a really long definition. <clears throat> and I'm choking up just thinking about giving the definition. It's the most probable price without undue pressure in an open market given knowledgeable buyers and sellers using cash or equivalent in a specific time frame. Got it? Let's go through that. It's the most probable price. It's not the highest price. It's not the average. It's not the lowest. It's the most probable price that a uh, buyer, giving knowledgeable buyers and sellers, they want to know knowledgeable buyers and sellers. You see this a lot when you deal with property in the Midwest, like Indiana. You get buyers out of Colorado that come in and go, hey, man, I want to buy that property. What is it, six, seven hundred thousand? And you go, well, no, it's two and a quarter. And they go, what? That property's 400,000 easily in Colorado, or that probably 700,000 in California. So buyers and sellers need to know the, the market. It's competitive and open. It's the most probable price, not affected without undue pressure. Foreclosure is pressure. So if a property meets all of these, then the value is a true market value. If any of these fall short or become defective, then it may not be construed as a true value of a property. Now, why is that important? Well, technically, if the property is not a true market value, the appraiser is not supposed to use that property in their calculation of the comps because that house did not sell under normal situations. Let's go through a couple examples real quick. I had a listing a number of years ago with a military couple that was, uh, he was assigned to Indiana in his military duty. They had a residence. He called me and said, hey, look, I want to, or I don't want to, I have to sell the house. I have been transferred and I am leaving. Matter of fact, I am leaving next week. My wife is going to stay around with the two children and finish the deal, let the kids finish school, and when they graduate, then they will come out. I said, okay. So we went through the process and I did all the comps and suffice it to say, we're not going to talk about it yet, but we will. And that house uh, CMA said it should have been in the range of 240 to $249,000. All right. So this is the example. The range of this property should have been in that range based on the comps that I pulled. Well, lo and behold, what happened about four weeks into the listing, the wife calls me and says, hey man, uh, I miss my husband. My kids miss their father. We're going to go ahead and move now. The next offer we get, we are going to accept. So we got an offer. Oops, not that. At 237.5. And she took the offer. Notice that that number is not in the range. Well, why didn't it sell for that range? Because the value, the market value definition broke down. She had or was under extreme pressure. 
she was under extreme pressure because her husband was already gone. She missed her husband. She was lonely. She just wanted to leave. That is a good example of when something like that would happen. Another example might be, look, I'm selling my house and my brother has put an offer in, so I'm going to discount it to him. That's another case of where that market value wasn't really market value because it wasn't in a competitive market. It was not an arm's length transaction. Remember, we've mentioned this word. Arm's length transaction means I don't know the other party. Well, in this case, he did know the other party. He had affections for the other party. So he was not as strict with the pricing. And therefore, that market value broke down as well. If those deals pop up when the appraiser goes to do his math, he better not use those two properties because they aren't the true market value. You do not want your sales price on your house influenced by a sale of another house where that seller sold it to his brother at a discount because that sale is not a true market value. And you, as the person doing a CMA, will want to make sure you do the exact same issue. Here's the problem. The problem is sometimes you don't know, so especially when you get into something that may be a close deal like this. The, this number is pretty close to what it was originally listed at. And if you just looked at the sold on your MLS system, you may not know that market value broke down. Now, sometimes it becomes very obvious when you see houses sold for 240, 240, 240, and 129. Okay, that number's wrong for some reason because it's very obviously nowhere near the other value of the other homes. So that home you may not use when you do the CMA just like the appraiser would not use that home either. A bank owned home, well, that was due to a foreclosure. You wouldn't use that home as a comp, neither would the appraiser, because you have to get to that you could only use properties that are the true market value, all right? Now, it's essential to determine that market value and there's the rest of those definitions that we talked about. Unrelated, that's the arm's length transaction. Reasonable time frame. Now, there's always this concept called the greater fool theory. The greater fool theory says that if you wait long enough, you will find that one person who may pay a hundred grand for something that's worth 90, but it may take you three years to do it. You might find that one person who says, oh, my mother lives across the street. It's worth overpaying, so I make sure I get it. So that's called the greater fool theory. So the, the, one of the requirements is reasonable length of time. You know, two months, four months, six months, maybe a year. You start getting into houses on the market longer than that. It's not a reasonable time frame. Um, Cash or its equivalent. Did the seller take back a land contract may have a different influence on the price than if he just flat out sold it cash. So all of these things are essential to make sure that the property the appraiser is looking at is truly market value. Now, here's this word that I have been shunning well, what's market price then? Because I told you we don't use that, but we kind of do. We always talk to our sellers in the term of market value. Market price is what it actually sells for. So if we go back and look at this deal over here, we could see that I did claim that the market value was here, but the market price ended up being here. And hopefully what we want is the market price 
to be in that range of the market value. If that happens, ta-da, we did our job right, and now we get to a closing. So the whole idea is we want the market price to be inside the market range or the market value. If it's not in a situation like I've drawn here on this screen, that is probably because the market, the definition of market value broke down for one of those reasons we just talked about. It was undue pressure. Maybe they sold it to a family friend. Um, maybe they you know, had to sell it in five days to get out of town under the witness protection program. I don't know, I made that up. But the point being is that market price better fall inside of the market value. Well, there's a third term. What is the market cost? The market cost is not necessarily the value. The market cost is what it may be if you were to replace all of the things in that house to make it new, like a new build home. Those are all things that may be in the market cost. It may be if the improvements were new. So if you are selling a house that maybe is 1970, the value of the sold homes may say it's worth 200, but because it needs all updated, that market cost may be lower because we have to take into consideration the buyer is going to have to add in new appliances. We don't want those olive green appliances or that shag rug. So there could be a difference in that market cost as well.